are slight variations, like I say, very slight from one brand to another. So if you're using this um, tutorial in order to help you with a different brand of sewing machine, you should be able to get by with just what's your mind, but if you don't, that's totally fine. And Hello, fashion sewers. I hope you are fine. If you're new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee, and on my channel, I do sewing techniques, refashioning of old or even new clothing, and I also have a segment where I show you items that I have designed, pattern drafted, and also sewn. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing, and let's get started. So I am going to be showing you the anatomy of the modern day sewing machine and its functionality. And um, I don't want you to find this too daunting, especially if you are a beginner. It can be, it really can be daunting because you see so many buttons and you're not sure what they do. And I always recommend that you have your instruction book um, nearby so that as you're playing around to finding what things do on your sewing machine you can always refer to your manual and you probably do that within the first few weeks or even a couple of months um, of you purchasing your new sewing machine so like i said it is the anatomy of a functioning modern day sewing machine so let's get into the video so here we have the side of the sewing machine and here is the hand wheel and when you use the hand wheel make sure that you turn the hand wheel towards you because the machine prefers that it stitches forward. Yes, it can stitch backwards and, and sideways and stuff, but when it comes to you handling the hand wheel, always make sure it's towards you. Here we have the on and off switch, and this is the area in which you insert your power cord. Let me see, let me show you the back. And let's bring it back round to the front. Let's get the handle and turn that round. So I'll start with the top of the machine and work my way down. So here we have the spool, which holds, this is where your thread lives on here. This could either be, as it is, as you can see, horizontal, or it can also be vertical as well. And you tend to find them towards the back of the sewing machine. You need a stopper. If you don't have a stopper, they come in large and also small. Um, keep them by your machine, don't lose them. They are precious because if you don't have them at the end of your thread, what will happen is that as you stitch and faster you go, your thread will fly off really, and you don't want that to happen. So what lives in this area also is the carrying handle, and that is important for when you want to move your sewing machine around or if you're taking it out, say for example, to a sewing class. Next to that is going to be this little spindle here is where your bobbin lives. When you want to thread that up, you put it on there and you put it against this stopper here and thread will wind all the way around it. And when it's full, it'll automatically go back to its position. And on the other side here, this is also part of the system for getting the thread to the bobbin. And here is where you would actually thread your sewing machine in order for it to go into the needle. Now this dial is for the presser foot, the pressure that you want on your foot. It's at six by default, and that is just standard fabrics, and it goes even lighter on the foot for lightweight fabrics. So uh, more often than not, especially starting out, it will be between five and six. Moving on from that, we also have a little dial here, and this is going to be for your thread tension. And it's at number four, and it goes all the way to zero, and it should go all the way to six, seven, eight, perhaps. Can differ a bit, but yeah, it goes all the way to eight. And there are, little boxes around five, four and three. So those will be the ones that you stick to more often than not in order to make sure that your stitching is correct for the type of fabrics that you are using. Further on from that, 
we go here, we have two buttons here. This button here is ideal for modern day sewing machines because what happens with this button, it secures your stitching when you first start to sew. Before we had this button, you had to reverse your stitch in order to lock your stitch so it didn't unravel. And with this button, it automatically does that for you. The next button beside it is the up and down for the needle which goes up and down. The button dial beside it is going to be the speed dial. So here we have it on slow, medium and fast. So slow, medium and fast. You more than likely as starting out would probably start here and then go to the medium speed and then eventually the fast. Um, I still use all three, I even use slow, depending if I'm going corners or curves, it really does become really handy to use. Now here we have a, a screen display, which will show you the threads and the feet that you're using, your stitch length and stitch width. And these are the buttons in order for you to get the right tension for each one of those. I'll put the sewing machine on in a minute and here we have a, a little pad of different types of stitches that you could use. You don't need to have all of these stitches and um, there are machines that have got a, a lot more than this um, but you definitely need a sewing machine that has a buttonhole function. And coming across here we have a, this is referred to as a bed here and this is the extension table and you can just give it a little tug it slides out completely and it gives you an arm in which you are um, which you are able to sew small areas of your project it just makes it a little bit more easier to stitch and slide that into position and most machines have a uh, a compartment here for where you hold your little tools or accessories in this area like so it can also be at the back of the machine and there's also known to be at the side of the machines as well here we have the plate and on here there are measurements um let's see there are inches and centimeters that are on this plate and this will aid you for when you want to um, get the right width for your seams and um, so yeah it's great to have the little, the little measuring units here on your sewing machine. So here we have the, the machine needle and the feet and what I also love on these machines is a needle threader. So this machine, this little handle here will aid you into making sure that you don't need to <laughs> spend perhaps even a minute or two um, trying to find the eye of the needle because it's so small in order to thread it by hand. So that is really handy. And you've got the foot here and to the back of the machine, you have a lever, which you can just about see there. And down here we have, the, uh, put the foot up. This is what you call a top loading machine. In other words, the bobbin is on the top of the machine. There's a front loading with most older models, which meant it was this section here. It was around here and you you put your bobbin in that way. But this is a top loading machine. So here is the bobbin. You put it into there and it has a cover and you just slide that into position and you'll hear it snap into place. And then here is a little uh, cutter for the thread. And here are the teeth here and anything else? No. no so that's basically what you find on a sewing machine. And then you have this little addition here, which is also inches and centimeters, a little measuring um area on your sewing machine so what i'm going to do now i'm going to um put my sewing machine on so you can see it light up and see the liquid display screen here so now i'm going to switch on the machine and you should see this light up 
and also the light bulb on the sewing machine so that you can actually see your work as you stitch. Now here we have the first one here is going to be the different types of stitching that stitches that you will choose. Now the first one is going to be this one here as you can see it is zero one zero one and above that is a tiny foot and it tells you what foot you should be using in order to you use this particular stitch and this is the regular foot that's already on the sewing machine so for example if i chose nine that should change as you can see it changed and the foot is now c so that will be the foot that would be that comes with the sewing machine that i'll need to swap this foot out and put in foot c I wanted to use a function nine and then it gives you the stitch length and stitch width and that does it automatically if you need to make any slight adjustments then it would be a case of just pressing to add or to take away add or to take away so it's listen again when i press the add See, it's not let it's not allowing me to do that so it's almost making a choice for you saying no this is going to be the best stitch length to achieve that pattern can you get it smaller yes you can but it won't let you go any higher and it makes kind of like a double sound the and then you have these arrows here where you can change the foot now here we have, um, I'm not sure what that is. I'm really not sure. So this is when your book comes in ha handy. It looks like it's a decorative stitch and it's got the letter E on there, which I don't know why. So let me just go and get my instructions. I'll cut it. Elongation key. Press this key to elongate the satin stitch. Oh right, so um, that's if you're just kind of doing some decorative stitching or you needed to do a satin stitch. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions to do with any brand of sewing machine, like I said, there are variations in how the machine um, anatomy looks on different sewing machines. Um, for example, when I talked about the, uh, the threads, where the thread would actually live, whether it's going to be horizontal or vertical, and they tend to live at the back of the sewing machine rather than the top of the sewing machine. I mean, they, they are slight variations, like I say, very slight from one brand to another. So if you're using this um, tutorial in order to help you with a different brand of sewing machine, you should be able to get by with just watching mine, but if you don't, that's totally fine. And um, yeah, but like I said, it is important that you understand what each one of these functions on your sewing machine does so that you have a much more enjoyable process when you come to your sewing projects. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please do share. If you have any comments or queries that you want to ask, then please put those in the comment box. And thank you for watching.